Pilgrim or Tourist Day 2 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Psalm 118 verse 24 Are you going to be a pilgrim or a tourist on this pilgrimage? Tourists want everything to go exactly the way they have planned and imagined. Seized by a fear of missing out, they rush around from one place to the next, trying to cram everything in. They are constantly buying souvenirs and knickknacks, many of which they will look at when they get home and wonder, what was I thinking? Tourists get upset if there are delays. They demand prompt attention and service to all their needs and desires. They focus on themselves, often shoving past others to get where they want to go. Tourists go sightseeing. Tourists calculate the cost. Pilgrims are very different. They look for signs. If a flight gets delayed or canceled, they ask, What message is God trying to convey? Pilgrims are not concerned with seeing and doing everything, just those few things they feel called to. They are not obsessed with shopping. They are aware of the needs of others. Pilgrims go looking for meaning. Pilgrims count their blessings. The reality is we are all pilgrims. This planet we call Earth is not our home. We are just passing through. If you go on vacation for a week, you don't consider the hotel you stay at to be your home. You know it is a brief stay. In the context of eternity, your life is like that hotel stay. Brief. We build homes and establish ourselves here on Earth in ways that ignore that we are really just here for a short time. It is a dangerous pastime to live as if you were never going to die. But consciously or subconsciously, we all fall into this trap to various degrees. Life is a pilgrimage. What is a pilgrimage? A spiritual journey to a sacred destination. Typically, it is a journey to a shrine or to a location important to a person's faith or beliefs. You can make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, Rome, Fatima, Lourdes, Santiago de Compostela, or any of the famous Catholic sites around the world. But you could also make a pilgrimage to your nearest cathedral. In fact, every Sunday, you make a pilgrimage to your local parish for Mass. People often make pilgrimages with special intentions in mind. Some ask God for a favor, perhaps to heal a loved one who is sick. Others make a pilgrimage in thanksgiving for a blessing they have already received. Sometimes, people make a pilgrimage seeking clarity on some decision they have to make. There are always couples who come on our trips to celebrate a wedding anniversary. They are making the pilgrimage to thank God for their marriage, the highs and lows, the wonderful memories, and the need for forgiveness, the joy and the mess they have muddled through together. And one of the most compelling moments on any dynamic Catholic pilgrimage is when couples renew their marriage vows. It is powerful in Rome, Assisi, Fatima, Lourdes, Santiago, and it is breathtaking as part of our Mass in Cana on the Holy Land pilgrimage. It's impossible to describe. It is moving. I have seen it many times, but the impact never fades. Life is a pilgrimage but it is easy to get caught up in the things of this world and forget this truth. And that's why, sometimes, you need a pilgrimage to rediscover the true meaning and purpose of your life. This life is a journey toward the sacred city, toward the heart of God, toward Eucharistic glory, toward heaven. Nobody makes the journey alone. We all need companions. Some of my very best friends in this world I met on pilgrimages. These trips are life-changing, and when you experience something like that with other people, you form a very special bond. The best friends in the world encourage us and challenge us to become all God created us to be, the best version of ourselves, and by doing so, they help us get to heaven. Let us pray for the grace to be pilgrims and not just tourists. Let us pray for the grace to be the kind of friend who helps others in the great pilgrimage of life. This is A Pilgrim's Prayer by Thomas Merton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you 
does in fact please you, and I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire, and I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may seem lost in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Now let me ask you again, are you a pilgrim or a tourist? This is the quintessential question for anyone setting out on a journey, and a crucial question for our lives. May Jesus, in all his Eucharistic glory, share with you the grace to adopt the heart and mind and spirit of a pilgrim, so that you can see, hear, and recognize God's messages along the way. And may the Eucharist provide you with a spiritual sustenance needed to live boldly as a beloved son or daughter of God. Trust, surrender, believe, receive. Lesson A pilgrim awakens each day with a grateful heart and allows God to direct his or her way. Virtue of the Day Joy The virtue of joy is a long-lasting state beyond happiness that is not dependent on external circumstances to be sustained. It is possible to be suffering and experience joy at the same time. The flames of joy can be fanned in our hearts with gratitude and service to others. Joy is the fruit of appreciation. If you wish to stir joy in your soul, thank God for all the ways He has blessed you. The other way to flood our souls with joy is by lovingly serving others in need. Spiritual Communion Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Every day I long for more of you. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, I invite you to come and dwell in my heart. May this spiritual communion increase my desire for the Eucharist. You are the healer of my soul. Take the blindness from my eyes, the deafness from my ears, the darkness from my mind, and the hardness from my heart. Fill me with the grace, wisdom, and courage to do your will in all things. My Lord and my God, draw me close to you, nearer than ever before. Amen.